Indeed they do. Indeed they do. Um, to return to, my, to, to return to the total that's been lost, of the £820 million that's been lost, £450 million is made up of private personal deposits. The balance is bond companies and corporate accounts. Um, the majority of these private depositors are UK citizens. According to the website for the KSF Isle of Man depositors, around a quarter are resident in the UK. So if we extrapolate out that number, it could be as many as some 2,000 people. Now, the Manx, the Manx government has now extended its depositors' compensation scheme to be equivalent to the UK compensation scheme, so it covers deposits up to £50,000. But unlike the FSCS in the UK, it is not funded. So as yet, there is no money in the pot to be given as compensation. And there are question marks as to how the FSCS will work in practice. It will require hundreds of millions to become fully funded, and the likelihood is that any payments made will be stretched out over many years, which is of little comfort of people who may be in their old age and um, looking to this money for their retirement income. Half of those 8,000 private depositors would be entirely covered by the FSCS if and when it pays out. Half, maybe some 4,000 people, including my two constituents, would lose tens and, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of pounds. I will give way. I'm very pleased that this has been raised today because huge numbers of people are affected by the collapse of uh, Cowthing Singer and Freelander Bank, Isle of Man. But will she accept that this is largely due to UK government action? And it is because of the government action here in London that the bank, which didn't need to collapse, was actually folded. And therefore, will, will she agree with me? that the government here in Britain should have liaised with the Manx government and with the Icelandic government before taking action which has led to this disaster? I'll leave the Minister to reply to, as to the actions of UK Treasury. What I would say is that it was clear that the banks were in trouble and had been in trouble for some time. And that, well, I'll leave the Minister to reply to that. I, I don't think we can, we can blame our own government for taking action to protect UK. Well, you might, he might wish to. I'm not prepared um, to do that. But I think to protect UK investors um, by the... And, and I'm not clear what happened with the transfer of this £500 million, whether it was transferred from Iceland to London, whether it was transferred from the Isle of Man to London, and what would happen. I, under, I do understand, though, that people are... Um, extremely agitated. I'm going to make way, if I may, because I just want to talk a little bit about bonds. The compensation scheme does not cover people who invested in bonds, like my constituent, Mr Speed. I've got um, a letter from Royal Scandia, with whom Mr Speed invested his money. It informs him the deposits are held by and in the name of Royal Scandia and therefore are deemed as a corporate investment. As such, the Isle of Man Depositors Compensation Scheme does not cover these de deposits. The letter continues, there is a parental guarantee by Counting Bank HF, registered in Iceland that covers these assets. This was put in place in September 2007. It is currently unclear if this guarantee will be honoured. The Isle of Man government has made representation to the UK government, which is responsible for defending the Isle of Man's interests internationally, requesting them to put the, press the government of Iceland to honour Kautfing's guarantee. It's important to remember in all this that we are dealing with Icelandic banks. That 100% guarantee is something that people have mentioned to me over and over again. They are putting their money into an institution that had a parental guarantee. It now looks like, unlikely that guarantee will be honoured by Iceland as the bank's liabilities were many times the sum of Iceland's GDP. And there's another very important group of people who have also lost everything. People who are investing for their retirement through the self-invested personal pension or the SIP pension have also lost out. They are UK resident and UK taxpayers, but no onshore bank will accept SIP deposits because they are held in trust. They have to be placed offshore. The Manx authorities will not accept that these are retail deposits and therefore they too are not covered by their compensation scheme. I give way to the Honourable Gentleman for Ferrum, if he's still interested, if he still wishes to... <laughs> just order. Let me just explain that in an adjournment debate uh, uh, there cannot be a front bench intervention. Uh, it is just a, a, a rule we observe on these occasions. Ms Mary Cray. For that clarification, I give way to my... Um, Member from Oxford East. All honourable members, how grateful we are to her in her generosity in giving way, uh, and we appreciate that. And uh, lots of honourable members, including my honourable friend Southwark of Bermondsey, have uh, constituents affected by this. She was right to draw attention to the issue of the Icelandic guarantee, and I hope she'll accept that at least we're keen to hear from the Minister 
what the government is going to say about the fact that, that, that funding held in the UK bank for KSF Isle of Man was sequestered by the British government and that may be money that could arguably be said to be usable to refund uh, at least some of the deposits held by other unfortunate people caught in this problem. I think that, that, that point has been made. I mean, I think, I think we heard from the, Treasure, the Chancellor at Monday's Treasury Select meet, Committee meeting, the Isle of Man is a tax haven sitting in the Irish Sea. The Isle of Man's tax status may be useful for some non-British residents, and it may also be useful for some super-British residents, but the reality is actually that depositors pay a 20% withholding tax at source in the Isle of Man. So any person who is a basic rate taxpayer in the UK no longer has any tax advantage by putting their money into an Isle of Man account. And again, I think that's something that is not properly... Uh, explained to people um, when they are taking out these investments and um, depositors declare their income from deposits to the government of the country in which they reside via um, a year-end tax return so obviously people paying tax at the higher rate will will be able to pay that extra 20 percent at the end of the year um, my constituents are British people living in Britain who have lost the money that they have worked for their entire lives. They're now relying on Britain to support them and to defend their um, interests. As the Honourable Member for South Derbyshire said, many were originally savers with the Derbyshire Building Society. I know the Honourable Lady for Amber Valley has affected constituents as well, the Portman and the Cheshire Building Society. A few people, like my constituent Miss Watt, were working in the Isle of Man. Some are working for British companies, some are working for the UK government abroad, some are working for UK charities abroad and are not allowed to have accounts in UK banks because they're not resident. I don't pretend to be an expert in matters of international finance and banking, but I, I have had to learn uh, quite a lot about this over the last few weeks, and the issue of the transfer of money has been raised. Um, I, I want to but briefly turn to the situation of Lands Bank in Guernsey. Those people receive 30% of their savings from the liquidate with data, and I don't think people who invested in Guernsey were aware that it's not part of the European Economic Area, so there isn't even the basic £15,000 compensation scheme that applies in Iceland. I think serious questions need to be asked of the accountants and the independent financial advisers who advised people to invest offshore, and they clearly haven't explained the risks. The, the risks involved. I'd like to end with some questions to my honourable friend. I would like to ask if his Treasury officials will meet with representatives of the KSF Isle of Man depositors to at least allow them to put their case. Second, can he obtain details of all KSF Isle of Man depositors who are UK residents and who may owe tax to the revenue? Can he write to me with details of the numbers of people affected because they will have automatically been transferred to HMRC by the Manx government? And can he ensure that HMRC deals sensitively and appropriately with people who have lost everything? Will he do everything in his power to ensure that Iceland honours its commitment to these depositors? And will he write to the Isle of Man liquidator and request that he makes himself available in London for a meeting with depositors to fully explain his actions and their op options to them? Can he also write to the Isle of Man government and to prep that they press ahead with their compensation scheme for depositors who have lost up to £50,000? Because I think once that, those um, people have been dealt with, it will be much clearer the nature and scale of the problem um, that, we, that, that, um, the, that, is, that remains. I cannot overestimate, to my honourable friend, the stress that these people are experiencing. The Samaritans are working very prominently with the website to support people through this period of intense stress. Their lives are in limbo, their plans are on hold and their futures are uncertain. And I just ask that all parties, UK, Isle of Man and Guernsey governments, the liquidators, the regulators, HMRC um, and of course the banks and, Iceland and the Icelandic and UK governments work together to bring this unhappy episode to a speedy and satisfactory resolution. Mr. Ian Pope.